and uh, welcome you all to this uh, very special program that we are organizing today. This is done jointly by the MCCI and the Pune International Center, the PIC. I think before uh, I introduce you all, uh, Dr. Sharma, who is our uh, uh, keynote speaker today, who is inaugurating or who is launching this series. Uh, before I introduce you to the uh, speaker, may I uh, invite on stage uh, Dr. Mashilkar, the chair of the program today. Please, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Sharma, please. And Satish Bhagat, the president of the chamber. As I mentioned, Dr. Mashilkar, uh, the president of Pune International Center, will chair the session today. So we are very, very happy that uh, you could take time out and put this on priority. Now moving on and uh, introducing you to uh, Dr. Sharma, Vice Chairman of Lupin Limited. Dr. Sharma uh, has had a successful career that spanned more than four decades. Close to a decade that ended in 2013, he has been responsible for shaping and link linking Lupin's stupendous success. One of the architects of Lupin having achieved, sir, we are blessed to have uh, someone like you come here today and uh, launch the session on Make in India. May I now request Dr. Mashilkar, the chairperson, to kindly address the gathering with his opening remarks. Sir. Uh, thank you, Prashant. Uh, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you all on behalf of uh, both PIC and MCCIA. And thank you very much uh, Dr. Sharma for being here with us today and uh, giving the very uh, opening uh, talk of uh, this series on Make in India, series of lectures on Make in India that uh, we have launched. I'd also like to begin by thanking Indigo Airlines because <laughs> in the morning I had to perform the duty of uh, being a chief guest at the national launch of biofuel uh, <coughs> initiative of the government of India. And uh, I took the 245 flight, it left at 2.44 and landed in time. So things uh, do happen in India, you know, I hear of time. Uh, I'd like to just say a couple of words about PIC, particularly for your benefit. Uh, Andri Prashant has introduced you. Uh, this is, uh, as we call, a Vichar Mantan King. All, right? All of us uh, do that here in Pune. Pune has been a thought leader as you know, for a number of uh, years. Uh, we uh, produce a variety of policy papers. We do a number of things. But I'm not go through everything, but policy papers are very important because you could quite clearly see where your talk is going to be fit in. And those are connected with issues uh, that are of deep concern to the nation, to the city, uh, to the state, and so on. Uh, just to give an example, we had uh, a policy paper on corporate governance. And when we do that, we just don't publish it. We get the key stakeholders involved in it. Like Virappa Moili was uh, then the minister uh, for corporate governance. He came, he released it. It was widely circulated. It found its place in the corporate boardrooms. Many of the suggestions that we had got sort of incorporated because we want to make a difference at the end of the day to the thinking. It was uh, sort of all around. Same thing we did uh, in the Maharashtra lectures. <coughs> we created uh, the Progressive Maharashtra report. It was <coughs> widely to everyone, including uh, the chief minister, leaders of various political parties. We had discussions uh, uh, here. Uh, we just uh, uh, had a working paper on smart city which is going to be released. We look at uh, the national scenario, the national initiative, Swaj Bharat is one of those initiatives. So we have created papers, uh, sanitation for all, policy papers, sanitation for all, laid by uh, Mr. Dilip Padgavkar and uh, uh, we have uh, on the 16th morning a uh, meeting with the cabinet minister who is uh, minister for Rural Development, Panchayati Raj, Drinking Water and Sanitation, uh, Mr. Virendra Singh, where this will be presented to him. Because once again, there are so many uh, new ideas 
in a way you like this, uh, that uh, are there in that policy paper, so that we want to create so influence this, uh, in, in terms of uh, their uh, uh, thinking. And I can go on. But so in make uh, in India, uh, you begin, and then there are a number of other leaders uh, who again, like Lupin, have done us proud by showing that yes, we can, we can make in India. They will be speaking. So this is where it is going to be. So I thought I'll just give you the context. Uh, yeah, in terms of what we're doing. In specialty pharmaceuticals or uh, uh, genetic drugs, you are occupied such a uh, fantastic uh, uh, position uh, uh, around uh, uh, the world. I mean, I remember you are making uh, the initial forays and then occupying uh, top position in anti-tubercular drugs and all that journey. And particularly for me, what is uh, fascinating is. Uh, your commitment to research and innovation. And you have given me the privilege of inaugurating the research center. You remember in Pune, by the way, those of you, we know we always talk about other things in Pune, Sharmar Vada, that, and the other. We have to talk about these innovation Vadas. <laughs> there are 1,400 people, by the way, working there. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a tremendous uh, sort of a lot. So we are, we are a much admired uh, sort of company. And you and I have had. Uh, a relationship for a long time, their commitment to research is such. They work very closely with National Chemical yeah. Board. You remember those days? Uh, I do. Yeah, where we used to frustrate you by not delivering on <laughs> time. <laughs> but uh, you still uh, sort of went with us. So, all in all, I think uh, that's a, a great occasion. I'd like to uh, uh, sort of welcome you on uh, behalf of uh, PIC, on behalf of MCCI, and my personal, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Kamal Sharma. May I request Mr. Magar and Dr. Mushal Kaur, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mashikar, for a wonderful uh, introduction and uh, providing you the outline of what is expected. Uh, you know, in such uh, at such occasions, uh, the topic, of course, is uh, is universally familiar. If one can uh, say, make in India. Thank you, Dr. Mashika, for a wonderful uh, introduction and uh, providing you the outline of what is expected. Uh, you know, in such uh, at such occasions, uh, the topic, of course, is uh, is universally familiar. If one can uh, say, make in India. Uh, but apart from uh, seeking out uh, what. Uh, in general, at macro and micro level, one would like to hear. Uh, I think this is an opportunity for a person like me to share my experiences. And uh, and as Dr. Mashilkar very appropriately said, that uh, how, despite all the constraints, uh, uh, Lupin has been able to do it. And not only Lupin, there are many other good companies who have excelled um, despite all the constraints. So uh, that's certainly a case. And uh, therefore, uh, the way I'm going to uh, share my mind with you uh, is first to uh, uh, build a context. And, and I think uh, while you are very familiar with the context, but it's good to uh, recap and, uh, and, and come on a common uh, platform. And then I'm going to share the success story of uh, Lupin as to how we've been able to transform uh, from a very predominantly domestic uh, company uh, with, uh, uh, with a 350 or $400 million market cap. And the $350 million market cap way back in 2004, uh, today we can proudly look at $12, million, $12 billion market cap with a $2.2 billion uh, revenue. So. Uh, it has been some journey uh, which has been uh, uh, very satisfying uh, and we have all enjoyed, me and my team have enjoyed contributing to this uh, and this is despite the constraints. So that's at the apex and uh, so to begin with, uh, first, uh, okay. uh, decidedly uh, the Prime Minister's uh, Make in India campaign 
signals a key objective of the present government's economic policy. Uh, uh, in that, it means that you want to uh, witness a rapid economic growth led by manufacturing. Traditionally, if we see uh, most economies, be it advanced economies or even the emerging economies of Asia, uh, earlier Japan and in the recent times China and, uh, and South Korea, uh, have had their economic growth led by manufacturing. In India, uh, last decade, uh, we have witnessed uh, our economic growth led by services sector. Uh, it's been fortunate, I, I think, uh, that we have at least seen growth. But is it the right kind of growth is a question mark. And I think that's what the thought leaders are trying to ponder over and pushing for us to move into manufacturing-led growth as against service-led growth. And the reason for that is very simple. One, that is the manufacturing sector which creates more jobs than the service sector. If you look at, I, I'm not very good at statistics and uh, don't enjoy dealing with statistics because that sometimes uh, clouds the reality. But if you look at, just for the sake of making a meaning here, uh, the India's uh, contribution of manufacturing GDP is about 17% and uh, it creates about 13% jobs. Uh, um, and you know, we are all very familiar of the mid 80s and the late 80s story of the United States of America. We have just no choice. Uh, with the teeming millions, uh, this demographic dividend could become a demographic damage or demographic uh, demographical sword on our heads, uh, which, uh, which will be very difficult to deal with. Uh, and therefore, I think we need to have uh, uh, employment created. Uh, we need to make sure that we have capital formation in the country, and we need to make sure that our balance of payment uh, state remains in good shape. We have tried to attempt and not succeeded. Uh, but why is it that we are living with the problem rather than over the problem? And, uh, and with, uh, with that in mind, I think let's look at some case studies, a few of them, just to build a perspective. So on 7 July, Business World uh, reported uh, that India has displaced or replaced uh, United States as the third largest steel producer in the world. Optically, a very interesting statement to look at, and all of us being Indian, <coughs> fills us with a lot of pride. So there's a huge demand for steel. We are uh, definitely uh, third now in the list, but we are ridden with a lot of technology. Uh, I unfortunately, when I when I read uh, the thinkers' mind and, and the learned people's thought, there are very few people who write about technology. They are not writing about a virtual world where you can do experimentation to get first time right. They are not talking of convergence of information technology with operation technology. Very few, only from the institutes. But politicians, economists alike, the general public, they don't even understand some of these things. Yes, we do understand infrastructure that it will help us with better supply chain management. We understand administrative reforms. Dr. Mashilkar mentioned some of them already. We, have all buffet, we are all buffeted with challenges when it comes to administrative challenges, administrative hurdles, if one may call them. But the fact is, do our, do our solutions touch upon monetary and fiscal levers, or technology levers, or infrastructure levers, administrative levers? I think we need to sit down and take a, a pause and think through the issue as to what we should be doing. And if we can, if we can think of that, then I think we can just get over the hump and uh, be good, be good, be better than even China. I have no doubt about that. We're getting into the area where we have to spend money on uh, uh, clinical work for our products. Uh, and therefore, quality is a very, very important, uh, the key driver uh, of this effort was shifting the culture. Because when we are used to uh, producing domest for domestic uh, customers uh, uh, with, with the technology which can be accepted by uh, the local consumers, uh, then to shift to a space where you are producing for the United States, for Japan, for Australia, for South Africa, I, I think it requires a huge shift in your mindset.
uh, labor and land. But you do need, I mean, I'm not saying to, I'm not saying that it's not required, but it's something that we can really take lead and, uh, and get going with the program. You know, uh, I, was, I was mapping this, uh, uh, and this is something I picked up from a BCG report. Over the years, since 2004, if you see India's cost of manufacturing, interestingly, we have not lost on our cost, uh, our, our table chair research, and that's the end of it. So I think uh, we need to uh, spend a lot of energy time in getting the technology push, get an ecosystem for entrepreneurship, which really means uh, people should be uh, encouraged. You know, IIT Bombay has a very good system now. Now, my question is, why is it in this country we don't have a large number of companies like Lupin? What is one reason that you get that? Uh, you know, we talk about leaders and leaders and leaders. You know, uh, I think you've got to have a passion and commitment. Uh, you should enjoy uh, people. You know, uh, if you have a passion to achieve. So I said a while ago in my uh, discussion that I was not very keen to come back to Lupin. Because I had worked in Lupin earlier also. Uh, uh, and in 2004, when Dr. Gupta wanted me to come back as managing director, I said, no, no, I think I'm doing fine and I'm happy, you know. But in the same breath, I also, and it took me two years to get convinced to come back. Uh, but now that I look back, I find that if I had not come, my life, my professional life would have been incomplete. So I think somewhere you have to have that bug, you know, to, to be able to do something. So you said 9% of uh, spend on um, research and development. Is that uh, at par with the industry, being in the industry that you are already in? Uh, particularly in this industry. But you could, uh, I think average you would see is 5 to 6, 5 to 7 percent. You are the highest. Yeah, we are the highest. And uh, although, as much as I'm talking about technology, I'm also responsible for the profit and loss of the company and the, and the stock price. So every time the budget comes to me, I try to slash it and argue, you know, sometimes spend a one full day looking at all the projects that are going to enter the clinical phase and the... And the very proud of you. Uh, I'm quite sure that $12 billion market cap that you talk about uh, is not impossible to add a little zero to that <laughs> over a period of time with uh, the kind of leadership that you have. And you know, like uh, uh, they, do the, they had uh, mentioned about those aspirations, you know, and fulfilling them. I think uh, uh, it's, it's absolutely uh, sort of fantastic. So, may I suggest? that uh, we can show our appreciation in the only way we can give a thunderous applause. To the Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, there is uh, one more minute we'll take from all of you and before I let you all go. As a small uh, token of our appreciation, may I request Mr. Magar, the president of uh, MCCI, to uh, to kindly uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all, and we'll keep you updated on the other programs of PAC. So stay connected. Thank you.